Hey, good morning. Uh, my topic was investigating the impact of demographics on the individual risk attitudes through our DOSPERT questionnaire. So, my topic of research. So, I asked myself some questions. Why are some people more inclined to take risks than others? And what could be the factors that make this the case? Um, I did some investigating into these sorts of questions and I began to research deep into the topic of behavioural science to see if there was any real statistical evidence that explained why some people are more risk seeking or opposingly more risk averse than others. Behavioural science investigations lead to better decision making because of the predictability of patterns in human irrationality. Once these patterns of human behaviour are thoroughly understood, they can be implemented to design environments that help people to improve on their decision making. Researching the significance of the impact demographics play on risk attitudes of individuals is an increasingly prominent inquiry currently being explored in contemporary psychological science. Current existing literature outlines the biological differences and neuron activity that contributes to contrasting behaviour in male and female species and the notion of reward versus consequence, contributing to the inclination towards engaging in more risky behaviours. However, risk attitude cannot be assessed as a general trait but should be explored as situation specific. Environmental factors and situations can and does influence the display of certain traits within individuals. That is, someone who takes financial risks is not necessarily going to take the same risks socially or safety. From this then born my inquiry question. To what extent are different demographics and DOSPERT questionnaire results correlated with the levels of risk attitudes in individuals? To measure risk attitude, I needed to utilise Blaise and Weber's famous scale, DOSPERT. The domain-specific risk-taking scale has been used to understand and recognise the individual differences in risk attitudes of people across varying decision-making domains since 2002. It is a widely used instrument in the form of a questionnaire or survey that measures perceived risk and the attitude towards the risk for activities in several domains. There are five risk domains in total that are measured, ethical, financial, health and safety, recreational and social risk-taking. I predicted that the differences in demographic nature of individuals would correlate to an increased likelihood of engaging in risky behaviours and activities within the five different domains of the DOSPERT. To begin to undertake this investigation, the original items of the DOSPERT scale were carefully examined and reviewed, and some items were edited in order to cover a broader range of risky behaviours of individuals. To generate a version of the DOSPERT scale that is more suitable for this research and inclusive of items that would be interpretable by a wider range of respondents, the 40 items of the original scale were revised and new items were added in replacement of some outdated prompts. These were the new 40 items of the DOSPERT questionnaire that were presented to the participants. Participants answered to these prompts based on a seven point rating scale shown for risk taking and risk perception. Participants with varying demographics such as age, gender identification, cultural background and level of education were able to answer in these questionnaires and their responses were automatically filtered into a data spreadsheet. A random sample of answers were used and therefore an unbiased representation of the population was examined. For the set of data we obtained, linear regression and students t-test statistical hypothesis testing were used within the R coding program to test whether or not there is a statistical significance about the relationship between the response and predictor variables. The results gathered from this experiment were broken up to test the significance levels independently between each demographic variable of each of the five domains of DOSPER. Our major findings in analysing the output of the data we could recognise that most of the mean results recorded for the varying age groups tested are observed to be within one standard deviation of the intercept or control group, which was the 18 to 24 range, and showed significance in most of the domains. The low standard deviation is indicative of low dispersion and a low variation around our mean scores, which can also be seen evident in the corresponding plot as the bars for each of the different age brackets overlap with one another. There is also one observed result that lies beyond the first standard deviation of distribution. There is an estimated standard deviation output of 1.1917, of which is greater than one standard deviation for the age group participants 45 to 54, in comparison to the control group of 18 to 24. Within the same line, that statistical result, there is an observed p-value of 0.0287, with an asterisk displayed next to it, highlighting its significance code of being less than the alpha value 0.05. And therefore, this result is statistically significant within this sample population of participants. In its corresponding plot, this result is represented visually as the blue bar for the 45 to 54 age group is the only one not seen to overlap with the orange bar for the control group. By recognising this value to be less than the significance level of the alpha value, the null hypothesis is rejected in the case of this domain, resulting in the acceptance of the alternative hypothesis, as there is enough statistical evidence to conclude that there is a greater likelihood for male individuals within the 45 to 54 age group, age group 
to engage in higher levels of risk-taking behaviours within the financial domain, for example, through activities such as gambling and investments. However, the limited sample size and number of responses that were received has been observed to hinder the data available for the female demographic, specifically between the ages of 18 to 24 and 25 to 34. The limited responses received from participants that fit this category make these results difficult to analyse effectively and present a limitation in being able to compare results to see any correlation and draw conclusions about that relationship between demographic nature of these individuals and the risk attitudes, to answer my hypothesis. In the analysis of this data, the null hypothesis was accepted as there was not a significant amount of evidence to conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that demographics plays a role in risk attitude for our female participants. In re-evaluating my inquiry question after analysing the data, we were able to confidently conclude within one of our domains that there was a pattern of high risk-seeking behaviour, specifically in the male 45 to 54 demographic, which satisfied the inquiry that certain demographics are correlated with the levels of risk attitude in individuals in the analysis of DOSPER survey results. If we can harness a better understanding of how and why people make decisions, we can design better behavioural science experiments, engage a better understanding of what factors contribute subconsciously to our risk perception and behaviour in future research developments to come in the fields of behavioural and psychological science. Thank you.